Well, good morning, everyone, and how are you? Is it morning? I don't know. It's afternoon, isn't it? It's actually afternoon. Yeah. Well, yeah, technically, I mean, it's afternoon. After the afternoon. Precisely. Either way, what we got here is Haley's car. That's right. We had put a subwoofer in Haley's car not too long ago, sometime after Christmas. Sounds yeah. about right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. She likes it. However, she was complaining the other day that, hey, it'd be nice if the rest of the speakers sounded better. And I was like, wow, you should talk to somebody that knows something about replacing speakers. So I told her to call Fernando. Right here. That guy. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and replace all six speakers in her car with these guys right here. KS coaxles for the rear, KS components in the front doors as well as up in the A-pillar. And then we're going to power everything off of the kicker key. That's right, the kicker key. So we're going to show you how to use this guy. We figured this would be a perfect amplifier to demo it on because we're going to be keeping the factory radio. She's already got a subwoofer so we don't have to screw with that. Why not, right? Yeah, so she can have two keys bad joke let's head into the car so one of the reasons why we were looking into the kicker key is because of this radio right here it's got the cool display that shines up here it's this weird looking spaceship style ugly dash but what's uglier than this dash is the replacement dash they have to put a double din in there it looks terrible I don't want to change the look of the car she's going to college she parks this in a parking garage all the time I don't want to screw with that factory look because I want people to look in the car and think that it's 100% factory the key seemed like the best choice for this it's small and compact so it'll be easy to hide in the car it's the right amount of power it'll give us some equalization it'll give us some time alignment it's got all the really cool features in it that we'll talk about in a little bit but I can keep that factory radio which will keep this car looking factory what we need to do right now is we're gonna go ahead and get these doors off get the little tweeter pods off do some little bit of roadkill a little bit of foam action around them get the radio out of the dash so that we can figure out what kind of harness we need this doesn't have the amplified system in it i want to see if we can make some form of a t harness ready to get going ready all right let's hop to it all right so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get this a pillar off so we can kind of get an idea what we're going to have to deal with for the tweeters and then we'll go ahead and move to the radio On these, when you go to pull these off, they have this thing that sits like this, okay? And what it's designed to do is you twist it and then you twist it. So this is what it looks like. So the easiest thing to use is something like a pair of needle nose duck bills. Just reach in, turn it once so that it lines up. Then once that pulls through, turn it again and there you go. So this is the basic tweeter here that we're gonna be going ahead and pulling it out. You know, this is a little silk soft foam. It's a fairly nice tweeter. So there's a capacitor on the back of the tweeter, which is a really good sign that there is no other crossover in the vehicle for the speaker. I'm gonna go set this on the bench for now, and then we'll go ahead and get this radio out. So anytime you need to take the radio out of a dash and you're unfamiliar with how to do it, best place to start, believe it or not, is going to metraonline.com. There you can download the installation guide to remove your dash makes your job a little bit easier especially if you've never done that before so the first thing to come off is this top bezel it just on snaps now there's also two 25 millimeter torques behind either side of this that need to come off Once you get this out, then go ahead and pull the rubber mat. There's gonna be three seven millimeter screws, one underneath the screen and two here at the front. Then go ahead and take your pry tool and lift off this piece. Just gently work your way around. Next, go ahead and pull two seven millimeter screws here at the top of the radio and then gently pull this face plate off. Now as you're pulling it off, as you can see, the air vents might want to stay put. Give them a little bit of a yanking and they'll come out. There is also one clip located behind the screen. Go ahead and unplug that. Now if your air vent does pop off, it's no big deal. Just go ahead and it will line back up and snap into place. Like I said, there's all these little tiny clips along here. They're small, so it's easy for it to pop out, but they snap right back in, no problem. Now in case you were wondering, this is the actual radio. This is it, your CDs go right here. It screws in through the top here. Now up until now, you've been pulling out coarse thread screws. These are fine thread screws. The whole unit will slide right out of place. Go ahead and just turn it around right here. So this uses the same harness as the newer F-150s. For those, we go ahead and use the Car AV 12240. We get these on Amazon. 
And what's cool about them is it's a T-harness, so it's gonna allow us to plug into the back of the radio, and then the radio plug will plug into here, and it's gonna give us all our speaker wires so that we can hook them up to the kicker key. The only downside of this is that you do have to wait about two weeks in order for these to come in. There's also another manufacturer, Metra. They make a T-harness as well for their high-level to low-level adapter. You can just buy the T-harness though. I'll go ahead and put links to both of these in the show notes, so if you wanna get one for your Ford, you can. So I was really hoping we'd have some more space up in the dash to possibly put the crossovers and or maybe the amplifier, but it's not looking like that's gonna happen. This looks really tight up in the dash here. So we're gonna have to definitely find a different place to put everything. For the amplifier, we're gonna go ahead and mount it underneath the seat here. We're gonna make a panel. We're gonna put the amplifier and the crossovers up underneath the seat. So we went ahead and unscrewed the seat out. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the running boards out. Right here, this guy, the hood release. This is a pain to get out. We've got a trick for it, and this works for a lot of the newer Fords. There's a cap that covers it. You go ahead and pop that out, and then you wanna go ahead and take yourself a 10 millimeter socket. What you wanna do is go ahead and push this thing in here like this and it pops right off. There's little teeth in here that need to be pushed in and the 10 millimeter is the exact right size to push those teeth in. Now that we have the hood pop off, we go ahead and get the rest of this out. We wanna start with removing this side here. The first thing we're gonna do is find the screws. There's one behind the, the handle right here in the, in the top. Grab your plastic pry tool, carefully. And then you pull it to the outside so you don't break this clip right here. That's seven millimeter in the top, two on the handle, and one in the bottom side. On the outside of the panel, it's like a reflector light. Careful, take it out. It's a, another seven millimeter. And then we can try our pry tool. This clip for the door handle, you have to push it a little bit and it comes out. So now that we put the roll kill in the back of the door, we're gonna go and use the speaker bracket. We're gonna use the best kits VKFS V15. O2. So we already finished putting the rock hill in the front of the speaker. Now we want to put the last touch, that's the foam. Like we said, we're going with the Kicker KS. We're doing a set of components up front. We're doing a set of coaxles in the back. Now the Kicker KS coaxles, they come with a grill. They come with a nice soft dome tweeter. It's a shallow mount, so it's easily gonna fit where we need it to go. This is what we're gonna go ahead and take out. These guys here, plastic, typical Ford speaker. Not a lot of eh to the music. It's kind of boring, kind of flat. This will definitely improve the sound for the rears. Now for the front, the KS components that we're doing are these guys right here. This is the KSS 6504. The nice thing about these, this is like a one-stop shop. If you get this speaker here, it comes with the mounting brackets in the box. There's a bunch of them, all these guys here, to turn this into a coaxial. So you can actually just buy two sets of these if you want and turn them into coaxials for the rear and then make them components for the front. It also comes with a passive crossover network here. The attenuation is on the top. It'll do zero plus 4.5 or plus nine dBs of boost. So you can get a lot out of these tweeters if you want to. Now these also come with grills as well. The model number on the coaxials is the KSC 650s. I'm gonna go ahead and get these over to Fernando so we can get them in the door and then we're gonna see how we're gonna fit these into the A pillar. So looking at this mount here, it's definitely a bigger tweeter than what the factory offered. So it's not gonna allow us just to snap it in. There's all these little fingers right here. So looking at it, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is go ahead and remove these. For that, we're just gonna use our flush trim. That's gonna allow us to cut them flat against this surface. So it'll be a nice and smooth starting point. So now that 
that we've done that, we can see that our tweeter will, will easily fit if we were to mount it from the back side. But this doesn't detach, it's plastic welded on here. So we might have to come up with another option. Now my thought is to go ahead and cut it here and here and cut a groove that will allow us to slide the tweeter into place from the back side. The other option is to drill these plastic welds, mount the tweeter in it. The only reason why I'm not keen to doing that is because if the tweeter blows, it's gonna make servicing it really difficult. So I think I'm gonna go with my gut feeling of doing like a keyhole slot to slide this tweeter into place. For that, we're gonna go ahead and use our grinding tool to get the hole the right size. All right, so we made the hole a little bit bigger so that this would fit, and we test fit it from the back side first. Then we went ahead and cut it into basically a U-shape so that this tweeter, whose lip is a little bit wider, and we notched it so that the lip is gonna fit underneath it. Now we can slide it into place, and it'll sit nice and flush inside of that mount. Spin it down so the wire's where we need it to be. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill another hole here so that we can put a set screw to hold this tweeter in place in its new mount. All right, there we go. Now it's all in place. So the next step on this is we're gonna go ahead and solder in some wires because this needs to run up underneath to the seat. That's where the new tweeter wires are gonna be had, which we'll talk about more in a minute. But we just wanted to get this out of the way to figure out how we were gonna do that. Let's move on to looking at the amplifier. Instructions. And then this little guy right here. Isn't it cute? As you can see, this is why I was thinking it might be able to fit in the dash. This guy is very tiny. There's a lot of places you could hide this. The reason why we decided to go underneath the seat is because we also have the two crossovers that are gonna go up next to it. So these will sit somewhere in this fashion. We don't know yet, we'll get to that in a second. It comes with the tuning microphone, which is right here. Now with this underneath the seat, this is gonna make plugging this in and out very easy to get to, so that'll be nice. Then we have the main bag here that has our power cables. Now this does come with a fuse holder. It's a 14 gauge. And then we have the main harness here. Now the main harness, there are two powers, two grounds, and a remote turn on. Then you have your speaker wires here. This is gonna be your output speaker wires. And over here you have your input speaker wires. Now if you'll notice, they're both white, gray, green, purple, white, gray, green, purple. This you can hook up high level or low level. In our case, we're gonna be doing high level. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these because we're just gonna run it into the back. We're gonna feed the output of the factory radio Video into this and it comes with this which I'm sure the instructions will tell us what it is and of course some screws we'll go ahead and leave the microphone in the box so we don't lose it while we're doing the install because we're not gonna need that until the end now we have a quick start guide right here in the box this is basically just telling us ah this is for the microphone right there cool so we'll go ahead and put this back in the box also now a quick start guide is always nice because it's it's installation at a glance which a lot of the times like we just found out you need that I'm more of a fan of the actual owner's manual I like to know what everything does but this at least will get you started on your installation and get you moving along looking at this this is going to tell us what all these wires go to as we said these are the outputs and it's got the white gray green purple but what are white gray green purple if you're putting this in and you've never done it before obviously you have no idea white is going to be driver's front gray is going to be passenger front green is going to be driver's rear and purple is going to be passenger rear now how we refer to those is one two three four so if you hear us talking about like let's hook up four let's hook up two that's what we mean there's a couple different ways you can hook up this amplifier so if we just wanted to go active on these components we're putting up front we can do that with this amplifier it's capable of powering four speakers the components are basically considered one set even though there's four speakers there in the instruction manual on page six it breaks out the diagram of the side of this amplifier these have a lot of dip switches that do all kinds of equalization and processing for this amplifier this is also where the mic is located, which is what they're showing you here. Let's go ahead and check out this picture. So game for amp one, game for amp two. This is gonna be front, this is gonna be rear. We have the limiter LEDs, we have the auto turn on switch, we have the fader switch, the compensation switch, buy amp mode, kicker EQ, time delay, and then over here we have the high pass filter. This is capable of 60, 80, 120, or no crossover at all. And then lastly, we have the radio detect button over here. Here. Now looking at the radio detect button, it's almost flush. You physically have to get in there and push it. And the reason why is it actually has a load built into the amplifier. What do I mean? Some factory head units need to see a speaker load in order for them to put out sound. It could be the head unit, it 
It could be the factory amplifier. Either way, if they don't see the resistance from the speaker, they shut off. Or, in some cases, they'll still play, but you get some high frequency distortion. Either way, if that happens, you're gonna wanna go ahead and push this switch. And what that'll do is that'll go ahead and add the load back into the input of the amplifier, which in turn will put the load on the output of the radio. How do you know if you need this? Well, if you turn on the radio after you've gone ahead and installed the amplifier and you get no sound, go ahead and turn the radio back off, push the button, turn it back on. This will add the load into it and should have the radio come on. As long as you've gone ahead and hooked up all the wiring right and you don't have any miswiring situations. Let's go ahead and look at the first switch here, which is auto turn on. What is auto turn on? Auto turn on is simple. In this case, since we are using a factory radio, it doesn't have a remote turn on out. We could hook it up to accessory, but that means it'll turn on every time we turn on and off the key and not when the audio system turns on and off. You might not want that. So what auto turn on does is that auto detects when the sound plays through the amplifier and automatically turns it on. Basically, it's generating the remote turn on for us. Next up is fader. Next up is fader. The reason why it has fader is if we were doing that full component set up front, we wouldn't want it to fade from front to rear, but we'd want it to make sure we filled both inputs on the amplifier. In our case, we are gonna be using fader. So we wanna go ahead and leave fader on. The compression switch. And we'll just go ahead and read what they wrote here and then try to explain what it's saying. Reduces high amplitude signals above a certain threshold, giving a more consistent listening experience and protecting your audio system. So you have engage or defeat. The idea behind it, protect the system so that you don't blow any of your speakers. Default is off. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. That way we can hear what it's all about. This is something we'll be able to play with when we're done with the system when we're going for our final tune. Buy amp mode. This allows you to do is like we were talking about, that component set. So if you wanted to run just the tweeters on channels one and two and the mid-range woofer on channels three and four. Turning on buy amp mode is going to add in a high pass crossover for the tweeters of 3.2K at 24 dB and a low pass filter for the mid bass at 320 Hertz at 24 dB. That'll give you your active crossover because it doesn't give that here. So turning on the buy amp mode is what's gonna enable that to happen. In this case, we're doing front and rear. We're gonna leave the buy amp mode off. Kicker EQ. Now this is one of the whole points of this amplifier. By turning this on, this is gonna apply the EQ that this amplifier is made for. By turning it off though, it will just set the EQ response of the amplifier to flat, like a normal amplifier. This is one of the features that has me most excited about this amplifier. Next is gonna be time delay. This is another feature that's got me excited about this amplifier. When you turn on time delay, once you've gone ahead and set it up using the microphone, it's gonna automatically go in and add in all the time delay so that the driver has the wonderful listening experience that you'd hope for. Another name for it is time correction. Call it what you will. It's one of the really nice things about this amplifier because there again, we're gonna be using the factory radio. If we wanted this in another device, we'd have to buy an outport big DSP that's probably bigger than this amplifier. And of course, the last two settings are gonna be for the crossover. We'll go ahead and set this to our 80 hertz that we like to start at. Make sure the gains are turned all the way down when we start. One last thing to talk about is the limiter. And that's what this whole paragraph here talks about. And I know how you guys feel. No one likes to read. So let's summarize. The idea behind the limiter is to protect the speakers. Also, to cut down on any distortion, overdrive. It's also there to protect the amplifier when you start the car so that you don't get a sudden rush of energy and blow the speakers. It also protects against low voltage as well as signal overdrive. So let's now move on to actually making the bracket and getting this thing in the car. Looking at the amount of space we have underneath the seat and where the air vent is, I think this is about the layout I'm happy with. Mounting the amplifier here at the front so we can easily get to both sides if need be. And then the crossover is mounted here and here on the opposite side of the air vent. We're gonna use this area here to screw this whole thing down. I think I'm just gonna make a cutout for the air vent itself, not make this funky U shape here. Now we'll go ahead and measure this up, figure out how big it needs to be, and cut some plastic. For this, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and use eighth inch ABS. It's rigid and it's thin. So before we disconnect the speaker, we're gonna go and test it for positive and negative. So now we know which one is positive and which one is negative.
also the passenger side is all done the speakers are mounted rockel foam uh, we're gonna go and jump to the driver's side all right After doing a little work on the table saw, this is the shape I've come up with. These are for the floor bolts and pin. Our amplifier is gonna go ahead and mount right here. And then our two crossovers are gonna sit like this and this. And our air vent will pop out through the center here and then the whole thing will sit on top of it. We have a tunnel that's gonna be underneath this so we can go ahead and drill our wires down through this and then run them through the car. Our signal will go up ahead and go this way up through the center console. And our power wire is gonna go around this way up into the firewall. For this, we're gonna go ahead and use a product called Speedwire. And it's a nine conductor wire. And what makes it perfect for this is it has a set of whites, a set of grays, a set of greens, and a set of purples. They're gonna match up to our outputs here and our inputs here. Now we're gonna run two runs of this because we're going with this T harness. We'll have the output from the radio is going to feed the input of the amplifier. And we'll run one set of Speedwire for that. And then we'll run a second one from here back up to the radio to go into the input. So this will connect to our speakers and that will create our circle of life so that we'll have sound coming in sound going out and we won't have to cut any of the wires behind the radio now the other thing we're going to do too is because this has this remote turn on wire in the harness even though we're going to be using the auto turn on this has a blue remote turn on wire in it we're going to go ahead and hook that up just in case that auto turn on doesn't work the way we want we can go ahead and connect it to an accessory to turn on and off the amplifier The amp rack crossover mount is assembled and ready to go. We have our power and ground here. We have our tweeter wire for the driver's side. Over on this side, we have our input output speed wire as well as our other tweeter wire. We went ahead and added a piece of white heat shrink here and a piece of gray heat shrink here. Those are gonna correspond to this white and this gray for input and output behind the radio. That way, because they're both blue wires, once we get them up in the dash, they will go ahead and match up to their corresponding ones so we know what we did. We got our wiring up into the dash. Our tweeter wire is here. We need to run that over to this side here. We went ahead and connected up our speaker wires, inputs and outputs, matched our gray to gray, our whites to white. So we have our T harness all assembled and ready to go. What we wanna do now is go ahead and unplug the radio, plug in the bottom half, plug in the top half, now the radio's all set and good to go. Now we can go ahead and tuck all this back in there, start getting ready to reassemble the dash. Now of course, anytime you do like a T-harness like this, you're adding stuff behind the dash. It's gonna take up some extra room. Go slow, just work your way around it a bit until you get it in all the way and so that it fits loosely. So you're not just like, Argh! so like if you take your hand off it, it pops out an inch. You don't want it to be that way. You wanna make sure that it just goes in, stays where it needs to. Now we need to get this wire over to this corner here. And for that, we wanna use a fish. For the fish, believe it or not, what we use are air conditioner zip ties. You can get these in 36, 24, and 48 inch length. Makes for a great fish because as you can see, it's ultra flexible and it's super thin. So by removing the end cap on this side, we have a nice straight run across. All right, now that we have that tweeter wire ran, we can go ahead and get back to the dash and put that all back together.
All right, the dash is back together. Let's head underneath the hood and connect the power wire. All right, so in the firewall in this car, there just so happens to be a nice big grommet that we were able to drill through. Now, everything is a trade-off. And in this, the trade-off is that's the battery. The firewall is way the heck back there. So trying to get the wire to where you can actually grab it is a bit of a challenge. So it's a trade-off. It was easy to get through the firewall, but a real pain to actually get the wire up here so then we can then connect it to the battery. Now they did give us this cool fuse holder. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna solder it onto our 12 gauge wire that we ran, put a ring terminal on it and get it into the battery lead right there. Inside of this fuse holder here is a 20 amp fuse that's already in there from the factory. We've gone ahead and hooked it up to the battery here. We've tested taped it up with high temp tested tape. Coming into it is the flexible loom we had put on it earlier. Now we can go ahead and tuck this into the battery tray, get our cover on, get into the car, and start listening to this thing. And that is the microphone in that cool piece of plastic that we were like, what the heck is that? We're done with the install portion of it. We have all the speakers in, sound deadened, rings around them. Like a fast ring, it's designed to push all that dynamic energy the speaker creates into the car. At this point, what you wanna do is disconnect your subwoofer because she has a sub. We went ahead and pulled the power on that so it's not hooked up. We want a pink noise track. So we need a track that has pink noise on it. Now it can be from your phone, it can be from a thumb drive, you can go to Kicker com and download a pink noise track that they have there for you to download for just this test or you can play it on a CD. Pick either one, go ahead and load that into your unit. Make sure your bass and treble tone controls are all set to flat on the source you're using. So a lot of these radios factories have what's called source tone adjust, meaning the radio has a, an EQ setting, the CD has an EQ setting, the aux, the Bluetooth, they all have EQ settings. Make sure you, the one you're using for this test, you go ahead and set perfectly flat. Now we want to go ahead and put the microphone on the headrest to where it faces up they want they want it as up as possible we're gonna go ahead and plug the microphone in and then on the, the little microphone it's got this little switch right here and this is what you're gonna use to set it up for auto EQ it needs to be in a quiet area okay there can be no other noise so like right now it's late at night we're filming this it's quiet in here so this will work perfect we have the door shut also so keeping any road noise from the road or the firehouse or screaming kids and dogs yeah so you want it quiet let's go ahead and get it set up get this auto setting so we can get in this car and hear how it sounds oh the other thing too make sure your gains are turned all the way down this isn't an option when you're setting it up they want the gains all the way down they also say in the instruction to turn it up to a listening level meaning loud but not blaring so I'm thinking halfway up maybe sound about good all right, let's get in the car. So we went ahead and put the microphone on top of the headrest like they say. They want it facing up. It's all set, ready to go. Now all we need to do is come over here to this guy and press this to activate it. So we have our bass, mid, treble, everything set to zero. We're playing pink noise. Let's turn it up. That seems like a pretty good level. So once it's done, it goes doo 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 doo. That. So that's a happy sound. So when it makes the happy sound, it's letting you know that it's over. When you hear that, open the door, press the toggle switch once. It's programmed. Whether you decided to do time delay, EQ, or any of that stuff, it doesn't matter. Whether it's on or off on the amplifier, it's gonna auto set that stuff up so that you can toggle it on and off to hear the difference. So you don't need to retune it if you didn't have those dip switches on. It automatically takes that in consideration when it's doing the original tune. At this point, this is where you're gonna wanna set the gains. Inside here, it talks about how to do that because it has that limiter LED, and that limiter LED is to show you when the amplifier is distorted 
authority. You don't have to do it blindly. It's got a setting in there to do that. You just, there again, you're gonna pay some pink noise. You're gonna adjust the gains until those little lights start to come on. And just like that, the gains are set. That's what I'm gonna do. With compression on, you can definitely hear it limiting the performance of the drivers at higher level. It's doing what like a compression microphone would do. It's like it's condensing everything in. So as I turn it up, it's it's like yay, and then as it starts, you can tell where the signal is gonna drop off. It just, it goes narrow. It's a really weird sound. I could see where it'd be useful if you have somebody that just is gonna blare the crap out of it and you don't want them to hurt the speakers. It'll definitely do that for sure. Yeah, I don't not like it. It does a pretty good job. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's, it's weird, it's like, it's kinda cool, because I know like, in this situation, she's gonna probably blare the hell out of it, so it'll never blow the speakers. It's weird, it's almost, it's hard to explain, but what it's doing, if you're paying attention, you can hear it. If you're not paying attention, you don't even know what's going on. And it's allowing us to turn the volume all the way up, which is crazy. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Let's go to something a little bit more dynamic. All right, we're gonna go ahead and play Bright Lights Big City by CeeLo Green, which sucks. It's like the crap, it's a great song, yeah, but the I recording like the sucks. Yeah. We wanna see what it does with that. Yeah, right there. That's crazy. That, it, it's actually trying to fix what's screwed up on the song, and it's doing a damn good job. It's like, the song has distortion pre-recorded in it, and the compression on this is trying to fix it. And it's it's doing good, like, it's pretty neat. We found, when listening to it, we were having a slight issue, and it turned out when we were putting the seat in, we bumped the crossovers for the tweeters. What we did is we, okay, cool, and we went ahead and redid the whole tuning process. It sounded good the first time, like, it was, it was nice. This time, wow. Yeah. Cause the center was a little off and that's what was like wait a minute something's wrong because you know it sounded good no you know what and then we looked at the the crossovers and it was like they were oh i was like ah. so we re-ran it wow yeah wow yeah. wow wow it's it's like this camera is right here and you guys are watching in this in in this the sound movie, is coming from the camera right there coming from the camera it's it's incredible so we still have the compression on we're still have it at 120 so we're going to turn it up and play some some different music <laughs> Now, the other thing too is on the this, this, the little knobby thingy for the microphone, if you hit it, it'll turn the EQ off. You hit it again, it'll turn it on. So if you're like, I don't know if this is working, mm -hmm. turn it off. Way out there. This is the first time we've had an opportunity to play with this. Yeah. And, and you're always skeptical anytime someone gives you a new toy to play with because it's like, eh, you know, the promise of like all this and you're like, eh. I've been disappointed way too many times in my life to, to think that something like this is that magical. You know, we've been doing the Pioneer Auto EQ for years and it's close, but you can get in there and you can manipulate it to make it better my voice should appear to come Ooh, from a single point in the center of your sound stage yeah. yeah so it's definitely doing the time correction right on i mean the levels are good now when we set this up the second time we turn the gains back down because you have to have the gains all the way down and we unplug the subwoofer again because there again you have to have it down i have to say they're definitely delivering on promise here of amazing push a button sound it's almost kind of scary really i want to go back to el crappy song <laughs> playing out crappy song sounds sound, sounds better and sounds so compression I'm all for it I, I believe it does what it needs to do it's not for everybody there's no question about it it's right. not gonna yeah. be for everybody but what it says it does it does and to me that is the important that's the important thing about a feature. And I know when a Kicker did their video, they left it off. And I get it. Yeah, I mean, if it's your personal car and you're setting this thing up and you're like, yeah, I know when it's gonna do the bad things, mm -hmm. but you know, we don't always live in that world. I gotta be honest with you, that's probably the best I've ever heard that song play. Mm -hmm. I Okay, so a couple of things to think about when you're looking at this product. Mm -hmm. 
It's not gonna be for everybody, we know that. Yeah. It's an all-in-one, self-contained, four-channel amplifier that do time correction, EQ, the compression, all in one little magic box that's it's this big. And a lot of people are gonna be like, oh no, if I can't get in and tweak the EQ. That's not what this is made for. No, this is no, not no, a no. tweaker piece, as it were. This is the like, easy peasy, put this thing in, let them in, squeezy, yay, good sound, done yeah, deal. it's not for everybody. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It should be for everybody, and if it was bigger, it probably would be. I like it, I'm happy. I mean, yes, I mean. This, this thing this is, is. This is really nice. Yeah, I mean, for press a button and get out of the car, set up, Whew, I the setup heard, is really easy. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Nothing that I've heard has had this good of an auto setup ever. You know, this thing is right on the money. I mean, and you're done. You, you hop out, you, see you, bye. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it perfect the way it stands? So if you buy it for what it's made for, which is this, is it is it perfect? And the answer is gonna be like, mm, I hate the dip switches. And the reason, yeah. I don't mind dip switches. I hate the way they have these dip switches because it's like, it should be on across the top, off across the bottom. They have it, so like, and, and when I was setting it up on the bench at the beginning, I was turning things on and off on accident. So like, I accidentally turned off the EQ and I turned accidentally turned off the time correction. Mm -hmm. Cause I set it to DE instead of EF, G, I don't know. Should be EQ on, EQ off. Time yeah. correction on, time correction off. Compression on, compression off. All right. Amp, by amp, on, off. It yeah. shouldn't be like off, on, on, off. Engage, disengage, thrusters, to back. It shouldn't be that way. Just have on, off. Real simple. Mm. That's really the only thing that kind of bugs me. What are your thoughts on it? I like it. I, I like, like it a lot. For what it is. Yeah. You know? Like you say, for all these people that actually know I want a little bit more heat and the You're, you're no. not gonna be buying no, no, an no, amp no, no, like no. this. No, and, no. and at the money that this thing it, no, there's no. nothing like this. No. This thing is awesome. Yeah. Definitely awesome. If you're doing something like we just did in Haley's car where we just want to improve upon the factory yeah. sound system, we're gonna be keeping this crappy radio. We just need to get something in this car that sounds good and is simple. Nice. Plenty of volume. I was surprised. There's plenty of volume coming out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of volume. And with the amplified subwoofer that we have in the back, sounds great. Two thumbs up for sure. Yep, definitely. All right, guys, that's going to be it. We've rambled on long enough. Thank you for watching, as always. Fernando, what do we say at the end of every car? All right, so if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I wasn't going to interrupt you, but I was just hoping for on to the next one. On to the next one. Bye.